folks and welcome to Sound Codex. So Black Data got updated to version 0.9.2 and in this video I want to read through the changelog document with you to see what are the main changes. The main window has changed much cleaner now. New patch, open patch, recently opened and the side panel has disappeared. If you want to bring it back, move to the bottom right corner, click this icon and here we have it with documentation, console, all tabs that we already know. The new feature is the library. This is really interesting because you can look for user-made patches. So click discover and here you can browse through there's a selection of user-made patches and like data devices. And if you want to download one like this, photosynthesis, simply click download and then you'll find it here. With a simple click, you're good to go. You can play with any plug data device or plug data patch. So the knob size has changed when in circular mode. Okay, so if we create a knob, Let's zoom in. Uh, where is the inspector? Okay, inspector hidden, click to auto show. So the inspector now has its own icon. And if we switch from square to circular mode, so deactivate the square toggle, you can see that the knob size changes a little bit. And this is why some of my plug data devices have some minor UI issues because of this. So in these days, I'm fixing this. Patch store to install community made plugins. We've seen this a few minutes ago. Experimental gem support. For those of you who don't know, gem is a library made for video processing within plug data, pure data. I won't dive deeper into this since I don't really use gem, but if this will become a solid integration within plug data i'll definitely take a look at it redesign welcome panel redesign limiter and oversampling controls okay so here at the bottom right corner we have the main out and limiter we can disable and enable it with a simple click and we can set a threshold and also we have the oversampling then moving on redesign inspector parameters this is a richer uh, inspector section. This is good. And then we have option to split sidebar to show inspector and console at the same time. Okay, to split sidebar to show inspector and console. Okay, so this one. So this is the console, these first four, and then the inspector, right? Oh, this is really interesting. Okay, so the inspector down here and the console on top. This is lovely. Minimap that shows you where you, uh, your view is relative to objects in the patch. Maybe if I zoom out. Yeah, here it is. Command input to control patches with text commands. So this is a pretty handy solution. If we move at the bottom here, we can see this greater than sign. And this is the command input. So if you select any object, like this knob, like data recognize that we have selected the knob object. If we click this button, we can enter values like 127 and we can update values without making a message object box, typing the number, connecting it to the object and then holding control or command if you're on Mac and click on the message. So this is a much quick and easy solution. You can also add a shortcut. Well, there is a shortcut by default that is Ctrl Shift M. I changed it to a much easier one. So go to settings, shortcuts, scroll down and here toggle command input. It is under view. So toggle command input. I changed the original shortcut with this super handy backslash. Next up, we have drastically improved patch rendering performance. Okay, that's really cool. Improved patch loading time. Great. New platforms for heavy exports like OWL, 
and WASM, I do not compile plug data patches with heavy for external modules, but I know that OWL is a re relatively popular one. So if you know more about it, write a comment down below. Then we have MIDI devices are now assigned to fixed port numbers. Okay. Pure data 0.55 and else updates. Okay, so we have some updates. Okay, new pop-up menu GUI object. Oh, that's interesting. Pop menu. Pop menu. Oh, that's pretty cool. No option. So it's better to take a look at the help file. Okay. So A B C D E. Okay. That's really, really interesting, especially for UIs making GUI for your plug data devices. There are plenty of new else modules that I'll play with and a lot more. Okay, Linux 64 builds are now available. Volume slider uh, shows DB full scale value when hovering. I think this refers to this volume. Yeah, 0 dB minus 9 and so on. Improved workflow for multi-window instead of multi-tab. Great. Tab bar now returns to last shown tab. Okay. Added destroy message for param to deactivate an audio parameter. Okay, so param is incredibly useful when you want to build like data plugins, those one that runs within your DAW. The way it works, it um, you can create a parameter, you can initialize it with a value, and this parameter uh, can have a range. The example here is 0 to 127. And every time you send new values from your DAW to your plug data patch, it will update this parameter. And with destroy, we can destroy a parameter, maybe because we don't want to use it anymore. I don't know, actually, I'll I'll take a look off camera. Improved text dialogue for PD Lua. I'm not a PD Lua user, but if you are, let me know if this is a major change on your workflow. Added syntax highlighting theme option. Improved patch search feature. Let's take a look at the search feature, this one. So for those of you who don't know, this is a lifesaver, especially with, with large patches and projects. Don't save. Okay. So if you select an object like this pop up menu. Oh, first, first thing first, it highlights the object so you can easily see the object. It was not like so in the previous plug data version. And it also says the position. So the slider is now at X position 550, Y position 315. The X and Y position is relative to this point, which is 0, 0. If I move it here, 0, 0. Great. And I also think that it moves the view for you. So this slider is out of my view. If I select it, it brings me to the object. Really, really nice feature. Well done. Patches stored in the documents plug data patches folder now be located by those on different computers. Okay, if the patch is the same location inside the patch folder and you load a DO project from another PC, it will be able to find the patch. Okay. You can now send a limit message to PD to enable disable the, the limiter programmatically. Limit message. Okay. So I think it works like, like this. So we send to PD limit zero. Okay. So it's uh, turned off. And if we set limit one, we can turn it on again. Lasso selection will now choose objects over connections by default. Okay. Holding Alt will now allow you to lasso select connections without selecting objects. Okay. So I'm holding Alt and it takes connections only. 
this is really, really useful. Again, if you're working with large scale projects, these tricks are incredibly useful. Overlay mode now shows with Alt Shift combo instead of Alt. Okay, so Alt Shift. This is really handy since it shows your patch as a diagram. You can see arrows indicating how signal is flowing from what object to what destination and the creation order. iOS improvements. I have to admit that I've never used plug data on an iOS system. Around 30% reduction in download and install size. Great. The heavy toolchain download and install size is now much smaller. The heavy exporter now prints the commands it's executing. Okay. Patches are now able to handle messages if the plugin is bypassed or if there's no audio running. So control rate values are still working and this prevent the UI from being unresponsive when plugins are bypassed. Okay. Draggable number boxes now limit themselves to a reasonable number of decimals. Let's create one. Let's make it bigger. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, they are more than enough. RM object can now have a default argument set by uh, passing it in after the create message like create 05. The default value will only be loaded the first time a patch is loaded inside the DO. As soon as the parameter gets set from DO state, the default will no longer apply. Okay, so I will make a video about ARAM and DO integration in general. Making an example right now on the fly would be um, useless, but ARAM is one of those key objects when you want to start building your own like data plugins or I prefer to call them devices than plugins. You can create your parameter object which is used to handle DO parameters and you can immediately initialize it with an extra argument after the message create. So something like this, create 0.6 and then you send it to param and when you create, when you send this message, it will create a parameter with this value, this init value. And then we have a bunch of bug fixes, okay, that I won't go through, but we're really happy all these bugs got uh, fixed. So thanks to the contributors and the awesome Plague Data community. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.